Today I am demonstrating the examination of abdomen. Now, examination of the abdominal cavity starts from the mouth. So you have to see the oral cavity first. Ask the subject to open his mouth properly and see the oral hygiene, tongue, protrude the tongue and teeth and gum. Next, you have to see the you have to do inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation of both side of the abdomen and for this you have to expose the abdomen above up to the sternum below up to symphysis pubis. Now the whole abdomen is exposed. Now the whole abdomen is divided into nine regions by two vertical lines, imaginary vertical lines and two imaginary horizontal lines. Two imaginary vertical lines start from the it is a mid clavicular line. That mid clavicular line is the midpoint between the tip of the abdomen and the tip of the sternal head of the clavicle. So two mid clavicular line is going like this and two vertical lines. These are the two vertical lines and these two vertical lines meets with the two horizontal lines. Now upper horizontal lines connects the two 10th rib, 10th postal cartilage on both sides and below the iliac pubic tubercles of both sides. So the whole abdomen is divided into 9 regions. Now the, this region, this is the right hypochondrium, this is epigastrium, this is left hypochondrium. This is the right lumbar, this is the umbilical, this is left lumbar. This portion is right iliac fossa, this is suprapubic region, this is left iliac fossa. Now you have to first do the inspection proper. Now inspection, you see the condition of the skin, whether there is any stria or any pigmentation or any visible veins over the abdomen and any pigmentation also. And now you see, after the examination, after the inspection of the skin, you see the size and shape of the abdomen. Here it is bilaterally symmetrical. In some cases you can get, you might get the flat abdomen. That is the abdomen is flushed with the 10th costal cartilage. That is normal. But in some cases you can get generalized fullness of the abdomen. This generalized fullness of the abdomen might be bilaterally symmetrical, this is normal. Or might be not be symmetrical. If it is not symmetrical on both sides, then there might be some lump inside the abdomen. And there will be, might be enlargement of any organs inside the abdomen. Generalized fullness of the abdomen is usually due to 5A, that is 5 cause, that is the first is the presence of fat, then presence of fluid, that is the collection of fluid inside the abdominal cavity, that is ascites, or flatus, that is the gaseous, or the fetus, or the feces due to constipation, that is um, these are the five causes of generalized abdomen swelling of the abdomen. Or abdomen may, might be very shrunken, that is in a very malnourished or in case of carcinoma inside the abdomen, any organ of the abdomen. Then you see the condition of the umbilicus. This umbilicus here it is retracted, this is normal, retracted and inverted. In case of ascites, or fluid collection of fluid inside the abdomen, it will be transversely stressed. Or in case of umbilical hernia, it will be inverted, totally inverted. After that, you see for any visible, whether it is moving with this proper movements with respiration. See, ask the subject to turn his face on the left side and ask the subject to take deep breath. See, it is moving with respiration. During inspiration, it is moving up and during expiration, it is going down. In case of female, it is thoracic in nature. In case of male, it is abdominal thoracic in nature. And in case of children, it is abdominal in nature. Then you see for any visible pulsations over the abdomen. In very thin individuals, Abdominal aorta, visible pulsations of the abdominal aorta may be visible. Then see for the invisible peristalsis over the abdomen. If the peristalsis is visible, there is obstruction either in the pylorus or in the small gut or large gut. Then you see for 
any hernial hiatus over the groin. After the inspection, you confirm the inspective findings by palpation. Now palpation, there are two types of palpation. You have to first do the superficial palpation and then the deep palpations of the individual organs. Now first superficial palpation. Your hand should be placed over the first over the left iliac fossa. Ideally, wrist and forearm should be at the same level. And it should you should not poke and there should, it should be mild. See, and, and superficial palpation should be anti-clockwise. First, there, there might be a little bit flexion of the metacarpophalangeal joints, but slight pressing of the metacarpophalangeal If there is any solidification or about any lump is there, you will feel it. Or any tenderness is there, you can feel that. The subject will complain of pain. So first, start from the left iliac fossa, then go to the left lumbar region, anticlockwise, then to the left epigastrium, then epigastrium, sorry, left lumbar region, left iliac fossa, left lumbar region, left hypogondrium, then epigastrium, then right hypogondrium, then left lumbar, sorry, right lumbar, then right iliac fossa, then supra pubic region. Well, first start from the left iliac fossa, anticlockwise, left lumbar, then left hypochondrium, then epigastrium, then right hypochondrium, then right lumbar, then right iliac fossa, then supra pubic region. This is your superficial palpation. Now, after this, we will see for any for palpation of the liver, palpation of the spleen and bimanual palpation of the kidney. Ask the subject to flex his both hands, both thighs, both knee joint and the hand should be on both sides of the abdomen and abdomen should be freely relaxed. And ask the subject to take deep breath. Deep, deep breath. Now first palpation of the liver. For palpation of the liver, you have to start from the left Sorry, right iliac fossa. From right iliac fossa, go upwards. During inspiration, you just move it. And go up. During exp expiration, you don't move. During inspiration, again, you move up. Move up. Here, there is lead liver. If the liver is enlarged, then the border of the liver will strike the radial border of your index finger if the liver is enlarged. Again, see, during inspiration, you have to feel. During, not during expiration. During inspiration, shashna jore jore, you can to shashna. Now, this is the process. During inspiration, if the liver is enlarged, it will go come down and it will strike the border of your index finger. This is the process of how you will palpate the liver. Now, examination of the spleen, palpation of the spleen. Again, you have to start from the right iliac fossa. Right iliac fossa, because spleen is here and spleen enlarged in this way. Downwards and towards the right. So, for start from the right iliac fossa. During inspiration, to try to feel it, you mold your finger. If the spleen is enlarged, again the border of the spleen will strike you, the radial border of your right in, in this finger, right in this finger. Liver, uh, spleen will be enlarged in case of collagen, malaria or in typhoid. In some cases, you, you are thinking that the spleen should be enlarged, but you, it's not palpable. Then you go for bimanual hooking method. Hooking method is like this. The left palm should be over the left costal cartilage. And press it and you try to hook it. This is called hooking method of palpation of the liver. Uh, sorry, hooking method of palpation of the spleen. Now, Palpation, bimanual palpation of the kidney. Your left palm should be on the left loin, that is the left back side of the left lumbar region. And right palm should be on the 
front side of the lumbar region. And from the by your left hand you push it and your right hand to push it backwards and then the left hand push it forwards and try to palpate it. If it is palpate, it, normally it is not palpable, but if the liver is, uh, the spleen is, uh, sorry, if the kidney is in that, then you will feel the right kidney. Like this, again like this, see? You press it backwards and with the left hand, you press it forwards. This is the bimanual palpation of the right kidney. Now left kidney also like this. This is uh, what the left lumbar region and this is what the right lumbar region and this press forwards with your left hand and press backwards with the right hand. And try to palpate the left kidney. This is the bimanual palpation of the left kidney. Now in your exam, these three things will come only. So I am not going to the details, details for further now percussion. Percussion is the collection of whether there is any to see whether there is collection of fluid or there is only flatus. See the flanks are generally we don't know where there, there are guts are there and with how much amount of flatus is there. So you try to first with the pleximeter finger and plexer, you are already you know what which one is pleximeter and plexer finger. You just See, this is the gash is there. So this is the resonance sound. Now try to do it bilaterally. This is the resonance sound. So, all the regions you have to percuss bilaterally. Now, if the subject is having peritoneal, peritoneal cavity fluid inside the peritoneal cavity, that is ascites, until unless 1500 ml of fluid is collected inside the abdomen, you won't be able to find any fluid. But if there is presence of more than 1500 fluid, you will be able to heal the fluid. How will you palpate the fluid? First, it is by shifting dullness. What is shifting dullness? Now this sub subject is in supine position. The first parkas in supine position. What we will see? We will see, we will find the resonance sound. Fluid on both sides. So if I, from umbilicus, that it is not dull till it is resonant. Now it is dull because of the presence of the guts inside. And while, if the subject is having ascites, from, you will get resonant, then you will get the dullness. And you note the point of dullness, from where you are getting the dullness. Dullness over the flanks. On both sides also, yeah, this is resonant. Now it is dull. And note the point of dullness. Then what will happen, what you have to do that is, that you ask the subject to rotate on any side first. Now fluid will gravitate on the other side. So this side, here we will get it, but still the procedure is, to purpose you will get this side will be resonant. This is resonant. Gradually, the fluid gravitates on the other side, so you will get the dull sound, like this. Again, again, ask the subject to lie on the right lateral position. Then, fluid is gravitating on the right side. So, park us over the flanks. Here, you will get the resonance sound. Now, you will get the dull sound. This is the shifting dullness. You put, first, you park us. In supine position, patient lying in back, you will get the resonance sound. Then parkas from umbilical region towards the flank. You note where the dullness has appeared. And on both sides, you do the same thing. And ask the subject to rotate on the other side. And then 
you will see that area that has that was previously dull now it has become resonant and the other side has become dull because the fluid gravity is on the other side now yeah, examination of the another thing you have to examine that is the fluid thrill of the subject left hand or right hand to place over the umbilicus firmly and place your hand over the plant and give the tap over there you will feel the vibration on this due to fluid presence of fluid you will get the vibration over your palm or yeah you do it you will get the vibration over your palm this is the fluid presence of fluid now auscultation auscultation with the help of stethoscope we just auscultate put the chest piece of the stethoscope over the right side of the abdomen sorry right side of the umbilicus you can place it over here also left side but usually on the right side and you will wait for you and wait for the gargling in the i am flexing this because the abdomen is relaxed now and wait for few minutes seconds and you will get the gargling sound i am getting the gargling sounds if i have to note that whether gargling sound is exaggerated or not if it is exaggerated and you can see more on all sides then this patient is suffering from intestinal obstruction but no gargling sound is absent that means it is a silent abdomen a silent abdomen means patient is suffering from paralytic ideas this is the thing you have to do you have to examine in this way inspection palpation percussion auscultation of abdomen while you are asking to examine the abdomen and you have to stand on the right hand side of the subject you have to do all the examination on the standing on the right hand same side of the subject that is the right hand side of the subject proper illumination should be there and proper exposure of the area to be examined yeah i have exposed ex 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 up to gp standard to synthesis papers in this way standing on the right hand side you examine the